Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I want to do a little video review of the Mac Pro. I've been using it for about two and a half weeks now, and I've got some takeaway points where I want to highlight the performance and how I think it might help you if you're on the fence whether it's going to be a good upgrade or not. Now, for me, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a good upgrade. I went with the six core model with a 512 gigabyte hard drive and I thought that would be a good starting point, but I wasn't sure should I go higher or lower. Uh, and what I do is a lot of programming, I do some gaming, and I do a lot of video editing uh, for all of my videos that I have on my YouTube channel. And I wanted to know what the performance would be, so I did some benchmark tests. Now, I'm not getting super scientific about this, I just want a quick review. No one else was really posting one of these, so I put together my own materials, just giving you a perspective of what a real world use case is gonna look like. And so the first thing I wanna look at is screen flow. And so the, the number breakdown that I have here is I had around three hours of content. It was 13 different video files that I had recorded with screen flow. So it was part of one of my iPhone courses, and that's around eight gigabytes of video data. And I wanted to know, okay, if I export those files into 1080p videos, how much time is it going to take? Well, on the Mac Pro, it did it within 53 minutes, and that's pretty good. And then on the MacBook Pro that I have, it's a 2012 2.6 gigahertz i7, that took one hour and 38 minutes. So there's definitely a boost there. It was almost 2x, it was 1.84x performance enhancement. And so that was that was pretty good. I was expecting a little bit more, but I guess I'll need more cores in order to make that work. Now, the big benefit of the Mac Pro is that the fan really doesn't spin up too much when you've got it under such a heavy load, at least through my limited set of tests over the past two weeks. So that's been really great. And the, the MacBook Pro that I have, the fan always spins up. Anytime I'm doing anything intensive, the fan spins up. It gets a little bit noisy in my office. And that's why I like the Mac Pro because it's much quieter. So that's a, a nice boost in performance. The other thing I want to highlight here is I'm probably doing more video exports than you should with ScreenFlow, but I have a lot of videos from recording all of my courses. And when you do this many, it requires a lot of read-write operations, and it actually pretty much locks up my MacBook Pro. So I can't really do anything except browse the web. I can't open any new tabs. Anything that's going to hit the hard drive, like trying to compile code, won't work while you're exporting 13 videos at a time. So that's one thing to keep in mind. On the Mac Pro, I was able to do some more things. I was able to compile code. It was slower because of all the read-write access, but there's a faster hard drive in the Mac Pro, which makes it a lot easier to use. So I did like that, um, but I still want more performance. So I probably need the eight or 12 core to do so many videos exporting at the same time. And I don't know if I'm gonna hit a wall with the read write access on the hard drive. So that might be a limiting factor for doing that many video exports. All right, so next up in my test was Final Cut Pro. And I did a, a 53 minute video export to 1080p. Now I'm not an expert in Final Cut Pro, but I did delete um, the render files when I was doing these tests. And the Mac Pro took around 23 minutes to complete the video export, which was really nice compared to my MacBook Pro, which was around 50 minutes. I don't have the exact number, but it almost was an hour long. And so that was uh, just over 2x improvement in performance, which is big because I was trying to do a lot of live videos like this one, and I wasn't sure if it was something that I'd be able to sort of build into my workflow versus the screen flow uh, screen class, because those are so much easier to put together and publish and export versus my experience with the Final Cut Pro. So it looks like it would be good for that. Um, the other thing I wanna look at is the live streaming. I did experiment live streaming on YouTube using Wirecast, and I was able to do 1080p with the Mac Pro. I wasn't able to do that with the MacBook Pro without dropping a lot of frames. So streaming is definitely something that you can do in 1080p on the Mac Pro. I did notice from my live stream during the WWDC keynote that I was losing frames or things were out of sync. So I need to figure out that issue 
because there was some sync issues with my lip movement and the actual noise I was making. All right, so up next is compiling with Xcode 5. I have an iPhone game called Bomb Dodge that I've been working on for this past year. It's got over 200 resources in it, lots of images, lots of animation files, and, and things. And it's a 2D game, and it takes around 15 to 16 seconds to compile on my MacBook Pro Retina. That's after I do a clean and remove all of the intermediary build files. And then on the Mac Pro, it takes around nine seconds. So this is good because this is an improvement. And I, I typically do clean builds all the time when I'm adding resources. And so while this isn't the most common way to build an app, normally it's a lot faster when you don't have to clean everything and rebuild. I find that Xcode sometimes forgets to pick up new files unless I do a clean build. So it's sort of built into my workflow. Anytime I make some significant changes that aren't just code, I need to clean the project to make sure that it's picking up the new animation, the new audio files, and removing the old ones. So that's something that's important. The faster that is, the better. I was really hoping for a little bit more of an improvement, um, but that's still a, a good uh, improvement from uh, such a, a large project. And there are bigger projects than my project. So this is sort of a, a small indie game size project that you can look at. And the last thing I wanna wrap up with is game performance. So I do play games. I play StarCraft II and Diablo III, Reaper of Souls on the Mac Pro and MacBook Pro. And it's really nice that the Mac Pro is quiet. So I can play that at full settings pretty much. And the fans really don't spin up like they do on my MacBook Retina. On my MacBook Retina, the fan is always spinning. If I had the mic on and I'm on TeamSpeak or something like that, it's picking up a lot more noise than I get when I am on the Mac Pro. So that's a benefit with the gaming. However, the D500 card that I have in the Mac Pro is not a gaming card. And so that means that the, the performance you get isn't that great. And I'm, I'm a stickler for frame rate. So I had to turn the settings down to around 2048 by 1152 to get nice frame rate. And that was with most of the settings on either uh, the highest or ultra and anti-aliasing on. If I went any higher than that, I was getting frame drops and stutters. And if you know anything about playing games with frame drops or stutters where performance is important, that can really mess up your game. So I, I like the performance improvement with the Mac Pro, but it's not what I was expecting. I was really hoping to use the native resolution of my 27 inch iMac. I wasn't able to do that. Um, but I would like to see a comparison with a more consumer friendly gaming card in the iMac. And I haven't gotten my hands on one yet, but I will be taking a look at that to see if that is better. I've had friends say that they can max out all of the settings. So I need to test that out and see if that's the case. All right, so that is my review of the Mac Pro. It's definitely a step up from my 2012 MacBook Pro, but I don't know if it's something that I wanna keep. The cost is a big factor for me, and I think for the performance, for the things that I'm going to need it for, I'm gonna need the eight or 12 core, and I might want the faster graphics card. So I already spent over $4,000 on this model. If I wanna get the faster CPU, that's another $1,500. So with taxes, you're looking at around six grand. You throw in the new graphics card, now you're pushing seven grand. And so all of these, all these upgrades add up. And once I'm at that level, that's like two fully loaded MacBook Pro retinas for me. So I'm trying to weigh off, do I want the mobility or do I want a quiet, fast machine? So if you want quiet, fast machine, the Mac Pro is your top choice, but it's a lot of money. And so... I'm gonna be returning my Mac Pro just because it's not uh, enough of a performance gain and I really am looking forward to what Apple is going to do with the MacBook form factor. So that's what I'm gonna do, but you might have a different use case. It might make more sense for you. It does feel a lot faster. I've moved back to my MacBook Pro Retina and it doesn't feel as fast. So I do notice a bit of a, a drop in performance going back to my older machine but the, the Retina that I have right now is still pretty fast compared to what most people are using. So that's my take on the MacBook, the Mac Pro and its comparison to an older high performance MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit one of the subscribe buttons somewhere on the side of the video and you can stay up to date with when new hardware comes out and I get my hands on it to test it out.
Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.